What's up, Mordekainer? What's good, man? What's up, Fury Curie? Fury Curie? How you doing? How's it going, guys? Couple minutes late, I'm sorry about that. Turns out it's a. I forgot about the whole switching over to the, the pixel logic side of stuff. Whoops. Hey, thanks, so. So, this is actually the end of. What just happened? This is what we did at the end of last stream last time. Um, I was in the process of getting a nice render. Remember last time we were talking about uh, our sweet, sweet original portfolio when we spent all that time going back over and kind of figuring out what you should and shouldn't do uh, and how to get there. Um, so today what we're gonna do is kind of tackle the next step. We've got a sweet portfolio. Oh no, you know what? I'm triggering myself right now. Do you guys see that gap right now? Oh my God. Do you see that? Oh my god. I think I fixed it. No, one more move. One more pixel. Ooh, oh, and then it's too high. Guys, this is the worst. Okay, I think it's good now. What's up, Naughty? Let's see, let's see. Oops. So, today, we're gonna go over sort of what that next step is gonna be, how we're gonna get there. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what, what to do, what not to do when it comes to art tests. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to navigate the waters when it comes to what what the hell do I make? How do I make it? Um, let's see here. So, what I thought I would do is I will go and do an art test that I did for ArenaNet. I'm gonna kind of break down the process for you guys. There's a lot to talk about, honestly. So before we start up ZBrush and get active, Second. Let's make a password for this. There we go. So I have this old art test, right? We have this Guild Wars 2 art test, this char I did. I wanna talk about the process to get from point A to point B. And then we're gonna start remaking it. I'm probably not gonna get through it. We'll probably do some of it off stream. Um, but the goal here with this stream in general is always gonna to be to sort of show you a different little point in your, in your, your uh, potential career, you know what I'm saying? So right now, we have a new job. The new job is get a job. And we're gonna do an art test. Job. The new job is get Why a job. did I just start job. talking to myself? There we go. So this is the art test that I took. Here's the high poly model. Um, this test was for ArenaNet before Guild Wars 2 existed. Um, and so a big part of what I ended up having to do for this particular test, and is going to be a big part of, of you guys when you do actually get tests, uh, getting through it, is going to be figuring out what, what the hell you're supposed to do. And part of that is a little bit of research, right? So I didn't know anything about ArenaNet. I hadn't played Guild Wars 1. I didn't know what a char was. In fact, I didn't know what a char was the entire time. This is, it had a name, it was Pyre. And uh, I just assumed that that was the creature type because it didn't look like the char in the game. Um, and so I just kind of kept going and went down this rabbit hole of making this guy. Um, 
but with a little bit of research after I got halfway through it, I kind of figured out a lot of things about it. Uh, I figured a lot of a lot of the specifics of what makes a char and what doesn't, and how much this doesn't look like a char. But the end result did get me a job. I just don't think that I did it. I, I approached it in a way that was super thoughtful. So we're gonna try and be a little more thoughtful today. I wanna find my uh, a notes. So the first few things you're gonna know is who your audience is when you're doing an art test, right? As a hiring manager, I try and only test people where I have questions, right? So if you send a portfolio in that is explicitly stylized characters and I'm doing the next Bungie Man Halo boy, right? That's what I'm making. You might be a great artist, but I'm probably gonna send you a test because I just wanna see you do that thing. Or maybe I'll ask for samples, either way. Um, but it's really important to know who you're, who you're being tested by and what they'd be interested in seeing, right? So if that's the case and I'm all my stuff is stylized, I need to focus on selling whatever style it is that they're they're trying to to put into their games. And it generally is the case that most companies have, they've got a look, you know, especially if they've been successful. So for me, if I test somebody, I'm gonna, I have a clear question in mind. I'm not just testing anybody. There are plenty of places that will do cattle calls. ArenaNet is one of them. Um, so places like that, you have a totally different task ahead of you, right? You need to stand out, you need to make a bomb ass art test. And in the end, it's gotta, it's gotta, in a sea of the same, when this is the thing that you're competing against, right? Let's just do one of these. Arena net art test. This is the thing that you actually are competing against, right? It's a wall of these tests of the same thing. Because this isn't very selective. It's not, hey, you, specifically you, I want you to do this. It's, hey, anybody that wants to do it can. And so, if this is the world that you're in, right? This is like making another Batman. This is like making a Predator. I, I'm not gonna remember which one you did. So in a case like this, understand that you need to stand out. And sometimes that means making some choices that would be a little bit off the rails a little bit. Um, I guarantee the ones that stand out in this wall are gonna be totally on concept and they're not gonna have done the weird thing. I know that when I was there, uh, there were a couple of squirrely ones where someone realized, hey, we have seen 300,000 of this test and this guy made the chubby version of this girl and it's kind of awesome. And he's good, right? You still have to be good on top of that, but you know, having that one little nudge the other direction from all the rest of the things, that's a great idea too. This is a company though uh, that actually encourages that, right? So when I worked there, the concepts that I would get, and I read about this actually when I was when I was researching them, um, the concepts that I would get when I was working there were kind of like, hey, go this direction. We didn't really finish the concept. It's not necessarily clean. Um, we need you to figure it out. And that's part of the job working at ArenaNet. So if you take that and put that in your brain, um, and you can read that in a lot of places. So it's like, this is something you can apply to a lot of different companies, right? You can have, read about them, read about their art direction, read about the choices that they make. Um, and you can spend a lot of time figuring that stuff out to figure out whether or not uh, you're appealing to the right people. Oh my God, this song is absolutely too much. Sorry. Um, so that's really important. It's like, know your audience and know what they're gonna, what's gonna appeal to them. Um, if you are doing a Halo test, which I've done before, um, it's very important that like their concepts are so specific, you can tell that they want you to replicate that. They don't want you to go off the rails. In fact, it's very likely that they would not enjoy that. Like, that would not get you points. So understand kind of what the concept looks like um, and what the company is about, and then make choices about how you're gonna approach it to both impress and also show your skills and the skills that you're not showing them in your portfolio. You can actually apply that in a lot of different ways, right? If you just think about like a small team, you have, you know, two artists, there's two character artists in the entire team and one concept artist for a huge game. You're probably doing a lot of, of self-editing. You're probably doing a lot of, of uh, the, the concept comes a lot from the final product, right? It's not gonna be super polished. You're not gonna get three weeks to 
figure out all the details on a character. So knowing that those are the kind of things that people are going to work with you, um, when, when you do work with them, when you see someone who does those things already, it's really, really easy to say like, oh, I see how that's, this guy would work with us. It would be great. So let me show you the concept that was I was given for this test, right? Direct folder stopped working, that's no good. Oh no. Guys, that's the worst thing. Oh no, it really did stop. Alright, whatever. We'll do it, we'll do it live. <laughs> Alright, we'll do it ZBrush live. Alright, so the art test. So this is the concept for this character. And you can read a lot of things from this concept. You can read, ah, eh, you know, this wasn't all that important. We're not really gonna worry too much about that leg. I've given you all the details you need. Now go figure it out. Now, it's interesting that this is a char because it does not look like a char. There's a lot of unfinished parts. There's a lot of things that don't really read like the other char in the game. And so that's important, important to know, right? Also, there's some things here that just don't feel like they were fully fleshed out, right? The the uh, the horns, the spikes on the, the shoulder, they're coming straight out of the the uh, the mantle. It doesn't really, it's not gonna look super great. So like, there's a lot of stuff like that, like little tweaks that you could make to this concept and no one's gonna be mad. This is a loose concept. Now, I, by contrast, Sorry, one second. This does not leave a lot to the imagination, right? Pretty technical drawing. A lot of very specific shapes, very specific geometry this. In fact, if it wasn't already modeled, like as a block-in, when it was painted over, I would be pretty surprised. So this is not, this is not the world where you go and you fucking invent things. Like, you just do not do that. You just stick to the guns, make the thing that you're asked to make, and do it in a style that that is very legible to them. Char, not so much. So another really important part about doing an art test is to start ref finding reference, right? And so when you know this is a char, you've got his friends here. So there are other concepts in the same the same vein, also char done by Keikai. So more information, more uh, things to ruminate on, like to to actually help you make decisions like what I don't know what the back of this character is gonna look like um, and I certainly am not really convinced that this is the right head size or head shape right doesn't necessarily read super well but I can find other other versions of this stuff get enough information to make some good judgments really that's what an art test is about is just testing your judgment honestly and that's everything from how how do you work to do you panic when someone says hey I need you to make something for me uh, how long does it take you? All the possible things that could come from you making an asset that is not in your uh, control, all of those things are being tested at once, right? So if it turns out it takes you four or five more days, that's a pretty good indicator that you were not on top of it. Um, and maybe you weren't the best fit, or maybe the other person was faster and, and they're gonna get the job over you, right? So know why you're being tested, know why uh, why you'd why you'd be doing it in the first place? Super important. But judgment to me is like that's the most important thing. If I see if I see someone get a a group of of concepts like this, and I get to say I say, hey, take these these concepts and pick one, um, and I want you to make it. There are right and wrong answers. <laughs> Right? If you pick this guy, I would be less excited than if you pick one of these that show a little bit more. Like, obviously I want to see more of this. I want to see more of that. Um, 
it's important to see that kind of stuff. With the, the bungee test, there was, there's two parts, right? There was block in the whole character, or animation block in, and then there was pick one element of it, the head, the arm, or the leg, and model that. Now that's a really good example of where you can use good judgment and just make the head, or you could pick the leg because it's a little easier to deal with. All of them have challenges, all of them have different challenges, but certainly if you don't pick the one that your strengths actually lie in, well, you messed up. Let's see some more reference here. Now I did also find the original Guild Wars, Guild Wars 1 character. Now this is actually, this is roughly speaking, the character that that concept was made for, right? Like if you look at this, this is the same dude. This is the Guild Wars 2 version of it, right? Kick I kind of stretched him out, pulled him upright a little bit more. So there's still information I can get from this, but certainly the case is that proportion, scale of details and things like that should come from this image. In fact, anything else I use for reference in this entire process is more just for like that percolating, you know, like a little extra information, things like the back of the characters, not the concept. Why not? Why not just use what's there, right? Little embellishments like these little braided cords probably aren't going to be the things that I had. So the process that I went through when I built this, this is a long time ago now. So like the actual, the actual resulting model is not all that hype as far as I'm concerned. It's like, okay. Um, but the rad thing about it is that it, whether or not it looked exactly like the Char in game, it felt like these Char, right? The Keikai Char. Maybe a little bit more like her. But if there's a game released and you're doing an art test that is referencing the game, you better go find like the equivalent in the game. So again, research, research, research. This, per this is a perfect example. This is actually a cultural, it's like a Norn cultural armor that go that's in the game, right? So if you don't go look at what they made, right? Like Norn heavy cultural you know, go look at it and at least see how they did it, you're making a mistake. That's the male version, I think. And then here's the, like, that's it, right? So that's the game model. Everything's a little thicker than maybe you'd expect. Everything's a little bit, it's a little bit peppier. Trims are pretty thick. Things that you don't necessarily think when you see that original concept. Right, like this is, this is the, the model. Now, proportionally, I think that the game model is actually less cool than the concept. So I would definitely stick with that. But the construction, like how they build things for Guild Wars 2, those are things that you should be looking at. If you have the opportunity, if there's, you have the technology to find that stuff, oh boy, you're making a mistake if you don't. Even if it's just comparable armor sets, you know, if it's finding more Norn assets, finding more, you know, do the research, spend the time. Super important to spend time doing that. So understand, Who's gonna look at it, understand what it's for and why you're doing it. So what it's for, meaning what questions do you think they might have about you? And make sure you don't miss those. You know, so maybe make a list for yourself of things that company does that maybe, maybe you don't do. Or maybe that you, you don't show super well. Does that make sense? I totally also am totally open to questions. You guys should not feel like this is a lecture. I feel like it's kind of quiet in chat. You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. So know why you're doing it. That's really, 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 really important. As long as you know why you're doing it, you can't mess it up. Well, you can, but you know what I mean? Like it, it's all about, all about your choices. So at the end of the day, um, once you figure those things out, the best thing you can do for yourself is just sit down and look at the concept uh, and figure out what challenges are going to be. So let's let's get into Photoshop for a second, and we're going to just redline, scribble over the top of this. Here's our friend, the Char, coming at you live, or ZBrush live. This boy, um, Cintiq not registering. There we go.
So, things that are gonna be pretty self-evident, this is gonna be a question mark for me. All that face, I don't know what that is. I'm probably gonna have to monster together. Like, I feel like there's some good reference that I pulled. Like this, I feel like these shapes. Um, that's not actually him, but I, I definitely feel the same vibe from this. So the way that brow comes out, the nose, um, how much jaw there is, especially the first one I did, I don't feel like I had enough. Especially when I saw what um, what they were doing for the Char and Guild Wars 2, I was like, oh shit. I totally, didn't, that is not a Char as far, you know, anybody that looks at it at my test is like, I know what a Char is, it's not a Char. You're not wrong. I didn't know anything about the Char. Yeah, well, the face doesn't read well, right? Like, it doesn't really look like a cat. It doesn't really look... Like, if you look at... If we actually just, like, draw the geometry in over this, right? Oh, shoot. I should get... Okay, I gotta get used to using this. Epic Pen. This is a pretty dope little tool, you guys. Check this out. Here's my new steez. Now, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense since I'm in Photoshop right now, but I just want you to see it because it's pretty cool. So... Oh, that's not a very good size pen. So this is actually on my screen. <laughs> so if I was in ZBrush, I want to do paint overs, or if I'm in here and I'm like, oh, I want to cha -cha. trash it. <laughs> so good. It's like a playbook. Anyway, um, so oh yeah, we're back to real pins. No, let's use it. Let's use it. Let's get it on the habit. This is a cool tool. What's my shortcut? Control shift. Wow. Sorry, I literally just got this the other day. Dennis hooked me up with it. No, that's not it. What? Toggle this. Oh, no, that's not going to work. All right, there we go. There we go. So if you look at this face, there are a bunch of things in here, like the actual geometry around the face, right? Like, where is the jaw, actually? It looks like it's completely under. And then the nose comes this far down. But... Very strange, like trapezoidal face. It doesn't have the weight of the rest of the body. It just doesn't feel right. So, this is the sort of thing where I'm. I know for a fact that that is something. If I fix this up, if I if I uh, if I make it feel right, it's gonna be a win. What I speak of sounds a bit scary. What's scary about it? Piano keys, uh, I'm, I'm not doing any critiques right now. I'll do it on my, if you come to my, uh, my, my, my Twitch channel, I'll generally give critiques whenever you want, but. Carrero, uh, you, you heard that, that, uh, quality is better than quantity? Uh, maybe, maybe one, one piece could get you a test, but it's a little less likely. Um, it'll at least get interest if it's really good. Um, but th that's like, that's like freak score, you know, freak level. Excuse me.
Nah, Jaeger, I don't know if I agree with that. That's a bad choice to say, do everything, because you don't do everything. I only do characters. Well, it's not, it's not entirely true, but... Um, the job is never going to be do everything, and if it is do everything, they're not. no one's going to expect you to be the best environment artist, the best character artist, the best concept artist. It's like you get it working, and then you're good. I'd say materials, you definitely need to show that. That's actually one thing I think people don't uh, consider much. Material, um, material work in this, this style of, of stuff, right? Like, this is a pretty flat image. Keikai is, Keikai is indicating metals with some kind of scruffy, almost like, it's like, um, what's, what is it called? Not anodized. What's the, uh, what's zinc plating, zinc treating on, uh, like powder coated. It almost feels powder coated, all this stuff. This looks like it's a little more polished, but the, the contrast between them is really, really, really low, right? So for me, if I just start with doing this, I'm going to go and just edit Keikai's colors. I'm just going to do a little bit of levels. Because I'm definitely not going to emulate that. I'm going to definitely get more contrast when I do this. We get a little bit better read on the, on the materials, right? Darker metal for the shiny parts, let the sparkly part, like the shiny specularity, pull that out. A little bit softer, a little bit more beat up and dirty for all this these metal pieces. Um, skulls will be bone, obviously. Bone will be bone. The horns, you can see there's a little bit of shininess to them. Really understanding what those materials are is going to be really important in the end. Interestingly, when I did this art test, um, I didn't actually fully understand what they wanted. And honestly, what they really wanted was someone who did high poly models and could go through the, the pipeline stuff and really understand how to make a high poly character baked down to a simple low poly. Um, I didn't really get the memo on that, but one thing you can do is do a little bit better job of reading what the job posting was and what the art test says. Like, know that the process of making an art test I means someone like me has to say, hey, I'm going to outline something for you to work on. And the things that I really want to see, they're going to be in that text. The guy that wrote the test, or at least did the notes and had someone else finish it, um, Often it gets like rewritten by HR and shit. I don't I don't understand that. Honestly, I write a test. I expect it's like the right thing since I'm the one gonna, that's going to judge it. But um, when you get to the point where you can read that whole that whole ad and see the, the key points, the things I mentioned, high poly, low poly, material work, make sure that those things are represented well. Make a checklist for yourself. So, at the end of this, once I figure out all the things that I'm going to probably work on, so what I'll do is I'll block out this whole thing. The whole thing is going to get blocked out. And at the end, once we have, why is ZBrush, or sorry, Photoshop just lagging around? Am I drawing yet? No. What? Uh, this is... 12 years ago now. I don't know what's happening right now. My Photoshop is not active for some reason. This song is terrible. Interestingly, Applejack, the truth is when you're doing an art test, where you when you're applying to a job, there's no reason that you shouldn't consider everybody that you could ever imagine as a competitor for that job, right? When you get to the point where you actually you sit down and you say, hey, uh, I want to apply for this job at Bungie Man's, the people that are applying for that are all the people that scare you. <laughs> And really, it's just a matter of whether or not you're a better fit for that job. It doesn't mean just because they're great, they're going to be the perfect fit. Nadia, I have to, I have to have jams or I can't work. <laughs> this is all copyright free stuff. That's why, that's why, uh, consistently I'm like, God, this is an upsetting song. It's not good. 
<laughs> so I'm sorry, it's not super vetted like my, my channel normally is. Most of the stuff I play on my channel, it's like I've constructed a playlist and it's the things I want to hear. This is kind of like, this is the least offensive sounding of all the copyright free stuff I can find. Came in a little late. Uh, what's up, Resners? How much time would you get to make this? Uh, I want to say this was two weeks, but I was working full time at the time, so whatever that means. So let's talk about this. Like, okay, now we got our we got our Photoshop back. So I'm gonna block this whole thing in, and I'm and another thing to think about when you do this, don't get shook on details. Kit bash things. Put together the stuff that you think actually is gonna be useful to you. Use whatever tools you want, whether it's hands that you've made before, or a head, or your you know your bust, your mock cat that you start with all the time. It does not matter. Do whatever to get it done. Treat it just like you have a job. If if I started tomorrow at ArenaNet, my job would be, hey, here's a concept, now go make it. It might even be finding another char model. Now I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm saying that at work, if there's another char model that's already a ZBrush file that doesn't have armor on it, shit howdy sunshine, I just got to upgrade, right? I just got a huge amount of work. I can take that and push it into what I need to do. Get the, the horns in, you know, figure out what this stuff does, add the armor. And I should not be in, in the circumstances of like, I gotta start from scratch. Don't do that with an artist either, unless they specifically tell you. If you got a hot body lady, start with that for your armor set, right? Start there. Don't get shook by like, oh, they're testing me. I gotta make everything from scratch. Also, only do what you need to. If you have this whole armor set, everything here, all of this, part of this character, don't overdo it on this. Wherever it's covered, don't overdo it on the anatomy. You know, if you need to do it to make it work, cool. Piano keys, how many people do you know got started in their 30s? Um, you're hitting 30 and you're, you're worried about it? Oh, man. Um, honestly, so I, I taught for the last seven years at Future Poly and the number of people that were older than me, and I'm not 30, I'm older than that, uh, that were just starting, wasn't small. I mean, I probably had a few people per class, and a few of them had, few of them got jobs not too long after class, but they were clearly like, this is my motivation. So really, piano, it's nothing to do with your age, it's how hungry you are, because really it does not matter how old you are. In fact, I won't know that until I interview you. And in fact, it's kind of awesome if you get to a point where you're old, like, if you're taking an internship and you're in your 30s, you can tell that you want it. It's not just like, you didn't just take a willy-nilly sidetrack, right? So, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. You don't ever have to tell anybody your age anyway, who, who cares? Resners, it sounds like a lot, but I had to do a whole high poly and low poly and textures. I actually almost didn't do this test. I got sick. So I was sick when I did this test, and my brother told me that if I didn't do it, um, well, he had some strong words for me. <laughs> so let's start, let's start blocking this in. Now, when I did this initially, the way that I started it was I started with trying to get proportions of this guy. Um, and... I started with proportions by using a biped. So I was in Max, I built a biped with a digitigrade leg, and then I put it in pose, put the, the image behind it, scaled parts to kind of get the mass of it, just to kind of get a feel for it. Now, ZBrush has advanced so much, and it's so much more baller. In fact, I might say it's the most ballerinest software that there is, as far as just figuring stuff out. I mostly just start in ZBrush with a sphere, or with uh, Z spheres. So let's, we're not even gonna make this a, a reference page yet. We're just gonna start with, uh, we're gonna start with, oh no, we won't continue this. So I don't like to have white in my background, so I'm gonna drop the white values.
It's okay. It's okay that it's a little squirrely. Got your first three job at 37? All right. <laughs> Whatever, Sunny. I actually mean it. I, I use I use ZBrush. I mean you you hang out on my stream. That's pretty much all I use. Okay, let me turn this value down. Oh, you know what? One thing I'm gonna do. Um, one quick trick you can do to kind of give yourself a little space and not freak out about uh, 1200. Give myself a little extra buffer. That's gonna give it, make it so that when I load the image as my my image plane in ZBrush, it's gonna just squeeze it in a little bit. I don't like messing around with the uh, the sizes, so. All right, so let's just start this. Let's start it up. Let's get in there. Get active. So we know who our audience is, right? It's 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 Arena Net Boys, and the Arena Net Boys like you to play a little bit of improv, and that's cool. That actually makes the job more fun, right? More fun for everybody. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just start. Now we could do this a few different ways. We could start with Z-Spheres if we wanted. We could start with Dynamesh if we wanted. Um, I think we should just start with some Z-Spheres. What do you guys think? I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to chat. What do you guys think? First three responses decide. Dynamic Z Sphere, Z Sphere. Okay, Z Sphere it is. Let's go. All right. So what I'm gonna do, and this is actually very similar to what I did with uh, with with the. Oh, is my mic level alright, you guys? I didn't actually even ask before. Um, what I did before was use a biped, which is roughly speaking what I'm gonna build here. Matter of fact, why don't we just use one of the? Uh, why don't we start? Well, let's just see what we had for. Uh, for the uh, demo boys, Z spheres. Look at this. Yeah, cave troll. It is. Obviously, it's a cave troll. <laughs> now we'll start. We'll start fresh. We'll start fresh. There's no reason you couldn't do this though. All right, so let's load the texture, image plane. I like to use image plane. God, I can't decide if I'm warm or if I'm cool. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop this sweatshirt off, this hoodie, and then decide there. It's like a core versus extremities heat problem. Okay. What just happened? Oh no, we don't have... That's so annoying. I don't know why direct folders broke, but it did. That's the saddest thing, guys. So like I said, I like to use image plane. Um, why is it upside down? What? <laughs> what? No. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Hmm. No, it's the right way there. <laughs> what? What? 
seven. All right, let's make it upside down then. Mark it eight. No, really, why is it doing that? Am I crazy? Upside down challenge. I don't think that's a really great stream. I think that's more of a my stream type of situation. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Cause I'm not inclined to argue with computers. Is it rotated or flipped? It is rotated. I have no idea. If anyone knows why that is, I would love to know. Oh, you know what? It's already loaded, so it's since it's the same file, let me reopen ZBrush real quick. It was a sweater. That's what. No, no, no. Uh, on XN, it that did not work that way. Also, because I'm because it automatically puts it in. Um, I don't have any controls of that plane, do I? No, that's it. Basically, is stamping the plane that it creates. Maybe the plane has a location on the drive that I could I could flip it on the actual plane. Whatever. We're fine, we're fine. We're gonna win, Zebrush. Alright, so. First thing we're gonna do, I always start from the neck. So I'll uh, I'll do one of these, pop in a little sphere. And I'm going to give myself just the base proportions for, or the base parts of all this. And then I'll move them around in a second. I like to be as simple as possible when I use my Z-spheres too. I had to go to the bathroom for a second there. He was just like crossing his tiny little legs. Like, no, 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 I need to pee, need to pee. So now, uh, Z-Sphere is actually default to Dynamesh, so you guys are gonna get your wish anyway, right? Look at that. You can turn on Adaptive Mesh, but I'm gonna leave it as Dynamesh, because that's really what I'm gonna, well, yeah. We can always Z-Remesh it once we get a little further with it. So let's do this now. We're gonna get it sort of in pose. One of the tricks I like to use uh, when I work on my models is I like to use the Z uplink cameras and I put them on my UI for a reason. I get to a point where this is gonna be my reference, my reference uh, point. And I'm gonna start just moving things. So I'm actually gonna show you where they are. In document, at the bottom of document, you open Z uplink properties. I use the custom one and custom two because it stores a camera that you can punch in. Um, Berserk, Berserk Rage, I'll look into that. I'll try and uh, I'll try and figure out a, a screen cap overlay. I don't have that right now. It's on my list of stuff to do for my other stream, 
and it's probably been on that list for a year and a half. So if you guys have recommendations, especially you jokers that do stream for uh, for for that, I'm, I'm totally interested in seeing them. So I'm going to store that, right? I'm going to go into document down here into the bottom here. Custom. Uh, you can see that I've actually put that on my UI. These buttons sometimes mess up. I hate that. I want to go grab them again. I don't know why these buttons, once you use them, they no longer are connected if you use one versus the other. Again, I told you guys about this the other day. One of the best tips I ever got was to put enable customize and store config on your UI. Uncheck store config. We're back. We're ready. We now have those buttons properly set up. Or do we? Why aren't they working? Try that again. So when you do actually get them working correctly. It's just not highlighting now. I don't know why it's not highlighting. No, this isn't a new feature. This has been around for a long time. I'm not sure why that button doesn't highlight now, but so you can see when I look at it here, it goes, goes orange. When it's over here, it should also go orange. It did last version. I guess I didn't realize it changed. Hey Nick, what's up Daniel? Now with, with Z-Spheres, I like to just be as simple as possible. I love you ZBrush. We're doing all the things so well right now. I love you. And now we're back. So keep it simple. I've also got my model opacity, and that's actually from the uh, texture reference views in here. You'll see me do this a lot when I'm first blocking stuff in. I like to use model opacity to give myself some transparency. So I can see where like, hey, maybe we could move this, scale this up a little more, get the trunk a little bigger. That's obviously not the right posture. He probably needs another spine joint. And probably needs to get further forward. So. Knees probably need to come forward, Hit butt needs to go back. And he's not got the best posture in the world, so we're going to make sure he looks like a monster. What's up, Bacon? Alright, right, Seagull, I'll, I'll check, take a look at that later. Daniel, uh, we're, working on, uh, we're working on one of the art tests that I did um, in our quest for a job. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna go through this process on stream. I'm gonna been talking through why and what you're doing. When you do an art test, why are you doing it? All you guys are gonna end up getting them sometime. And this is just as important as the actual job. In fact, it's really, if you just think of it as the actual job, anything you would do on the actual job, you should be doing there. I never thought to do it myself, but I have to say, uh, the last few times I've given art tests, there have been some pretty shrewd people who have been like, hey, Joe, do you think you could give me feedback on this test that you're doing I'm doing for you. And I'm like, shit, I guess. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll give you feedback, why not? You're gonna have to get it from me at some point, right? Um, and I think that's a really interesting perspective change for me. I never really thought to do that. I never would have done that.
but now I most certainly would. I mean, I ask my friends if I do an art test, I'll ask my friends for feedback. Um, so why not ask the people that are actually going to tell you if you get a job or not? I don't have my time up. I don't understand why my, oh, there it is. <laughs> What's up, Tampilock? Tampilock? Tampil okay? <laughs> How's the space needle? It's fine, man. It looks kind of like a space wiener. There are no subs for this channel. I don't think. <laughs> there's no there's no sub button so I don't know how it could be sub only chat they'll be pretty advanced though some of these guys are real real tricky all right um, I didn't save my camera which you can do right where you you would expect right in doc like document Z app link there's save and load views when you save some you punch some in that's a useful trick So one thing to look at here is that this back leg is one, not in perspective, and two, gives no shits about perspective. <laughs> like, this will really get you messed up. Actually, both of those are kind of questionable. So I'm gonna rely more on my reference for the leg size once I get a, a, general, a general shape down. Now it needs way more mass in the chest. The chest is way, way skinny. So what I'm gonna do is sort of take what I know about this guy, and what I'm feeling about this guy. I'm gonna scale down this head a little. Actually, we're gonna get around the form a little bit more. So I'm gonna move my, my char a little bit. When you're using Z-Spheres, one thing to remember is that your brush size affects how many uh, Z-Spheres you actually grab. So you can see if I have a big brush, anything inside that center circle is gonna go with it or be affected. And you see there's fall off. So the further I go, the less it's affected, but it's important to know that's a, that's part of the, part of the function. So if you wanna just control one at a time, Get you a small brush. All right, let's just move on. So I'm not actually gonna use this anymore. The Z spheres, that's enough for me. Um, and what I'll do is just commit it. And we'll go back to that. Oh, I didn't make that, I didn't save that camera. It's fine. The feet are really nice, by the way. Check those out. Check those feet out, guys. Some next, next level, next generation work right there. Now I'm gonna use big, broad strokes. Actually, this is too high res geometry for me. For what I'm doing right now.
Matter of fact, it's just your mission right now. You can always dynamite shit again later. I'll pull the tail out. Won't be a big deal. What do I think about redrawing? Oh yeah, do it. Do whatever you need to do to get it done. I really, 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 oh no, what did I do back here? MBD, bro. I really, 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 really like to have low res geometry when I start. I don't want to mess around with super high res Dynamesh, Dynamizi, as, uh, as we call it in the industry. We don't. No one calls it that. No one does that. Literally no one, including me. The important part about the early stages of doing a character really is just kind of trying to find the the value in um, like the is like economy to simplicity and finding the the valuable landmarks on a character. So as I'm doing this, I want to make sure that he has the mass first. So I'm working on the silhouette, generally pushing and pulling it around. Um, I always like to do a little bit of sculpting on anatomy, like a little bit at least, right away. Oh boy. about sculpting is that it doesn't matter who does it at the beginning it looks bad until it doesn't and it might take a little longer when you're starting out to get to the point where you start seeing the shapes that you're supposed to but it's always gonna look weird until it doesn't no exceptions everybody gets the weird baby state like the ugly baby sage which you're witnessing right now. Some of us have a, a longer ugly baby stage. I just, I don't know if I ever got out of it. Don't be afraid to keep multiple tools um, for early stuff like this. I don't have to worry about connecting them just yet. Matter of fact, I'm not going to think about connecting them for just yet.
This time, this is gonna be a swole char. Last time, he wasn't so swole. I like, I like a swole char. As far as chars go, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like a big boy, tough guy. Like his name would be like Brock or Brace or something like that. Even though I know his name is Pyre. Gains, exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's just gains. Gains. This boy needs a hip. Needs a hip. Thanks for joining us on the Monster Cat Podcast. We won't make that mistake twice. Little baby boy Char. No, sir. No, sir. Call this boy Arnold. What, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, how are we talking about, what are we talking about Topo right now? What are we talking about? I'm reading some things that are scaring me. I'm reading back. What are the rules of thumb? <laughs> First of all, let's not use rules of thumb. Let's just strike that from our vernacular. Let's pause. Skip that. That's a bullshit. That's a bullshit. Uh, let's see. Applejack, in general, um, at joints, you want to make sure that you give the right amount. Now, it's different per joint, and it's also different per polygon. So, like, if you only have a thousand polygons for a whole character, you're not going to get a full loop at each joint of the fingers, right? You probably aren't even going to have bones for those, because they're going to be low poly. Um, but, like, generally speaking... The uh, deforming side, you want more geometry, and the underside, you can use less. In fact, you want less, so there's less to crush. Um, for the cheapest, the cheapest version of any joint, you would have two edges. One, so like basically, one can go to the top joint, one can go to the the lower and the hierarchy, so they can bend, and it will stretch that area. That's not the case that you can't have just one one point there. It's just gonna smush. I was using the inflate tool that whole time. Shit. The whole quads versus triangles thing needs to go to bed. Like, that's just never actually a thing apart from subdivision modeling. Like, ZBrush doesn't give a shit about a, a triangle. I would tell you that. When you subdivide, it'll, it'll give you a burr. But generally speaking, the tools and the way that it smooths it really doesn't matter. In fact, quads only help you uh, with animation in the, like the form of actually keeping inches from happening, just, but there's still going to be a triangle in the game. No matter what you do, you make triangles. All those beautiful quads that you spend all that time laboring over, and your professor told you, oh, don't, don't do anything but quads, that person was so wrong. <laughs> really, it's just about, a, it's about uh, polygon management, really, you know? That's what they're for. My legs are too long, that's fine. 
the upper leg's too long. But I'm not super worried about that. I'm just kind of like getting rough shapes right now. How you doing, chat, in general? Yeah, well, I guess I'm saying that, um, don't you want to control where the, where the triangle is, right? In fact, I'm saying, like, that's, that's really what it comes down to, is, like, you want to control that, and so if you want to control that, then they need to be triangles. You let the engine do it, old boy. <laughs> Fine looking lizard man. Lizard cat. So the girl that designed the char, um, she took one of my first ZBrush classes. We worked together at ArenaNet and I, when I taught the first time I taught, she was in one of my classes, and I remember I, was, I used this this model in all my classes. I would use it to just like show the the steps that I've taken through it. Um, and uh, she was just like, "That's not a char." And I was like, "I mean, I can't argue with you on account of you designed them." Any thoughts on general art test etiquette? Like what's good, what's a good average to complete them? Uh, how, how understanding about the fact that you might be doing this test while working a full-time job. Everyone knows that mellow. It's like start from, they assume that if you're testable, you probably have a job. And so whatever the number is, assume that they really do mean you should be able to get it. 
Um, but really just do the right thing, like get it done. They'll, if Unless they give you guidelines, they give you that time, find a way to get it done in that time. Whatever that means. They're, uh, they're cat monsters from Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2. Cat beasts. So one of the things that I like to do um, for quick, quick topo disasters, like where I know I want more geometry up in this face, um, and I know generally the shapes that are going to be there, I will make, instead of doing Z remesh guides, which are fine, I will just go and etch in the shapes that I want it to respect. I might even subdivide one more time so I can get a little bit more specific. Zero Mesh does a great job of finding, uh, finding shapes. And finding those, those edges. So this is my, this is my one stop, like just, please just give me some more topo that follows these curves, thank you. And I actually really don't care what the actual the, the rest of the model looks like right now, but if I wanted to, I could do a little bit of this. Just do like this like etching, right? I'm messing up the model right now, that's fine. Give myself a poly count that looks reasonable. Probably like 1.4K. I'll just zero mesh it. And then when I subdivide it, those shapes are gonna kind of pop through the subdivided cleaned up version. Do a quick smooth, subdivide it. But now my topo kind of runs those shapes. And that way I don't have to finick, like be finicky with, I, I actually really don't care what the geometry looks like in general. I just know that there's some areas that I just was hoping it would pick up on. So. Yeah, the neck might have got a little long. You're not wrong. But you'll see, I primarily, at this stage, I primarily work with the Z remesh model on and off. I switch back and forth um, between new topo, old topo, clean up, then let it go, clean up, let it go. My nervy voice? I don't have a nervy voice. <laughs> That's not true. If I felt nervous, 
when we would be in a different world. So the other thing I want to do is make sure that I give myself clear start points, but then I want to actually block this stuff in. I want to actually have all the parts on my model. And I usually do that just by scribbling over the mesh. I'll scribble like on top of my, my character. And when I do that, it's not with any intention to keep the, the mess that I'm going to make. It's just to give myself kind of a pilot program for either retoppling or extracting out the parts. Kind of, <laughs> I don't know. It's whatever. There's two sets of horns on this guy. Uh, it's just a, it's a script. All it's doing is extracting and then dropping the mask in and turning on symmetry. Because I constantly extract parts 
and then I don't actually use, like I don't have symmetry on, and the end result is that I have half my model sculpted on that I'm gonna mess up, right? It's the idiot proof button for extracting. <laughs> so it's like extract preview, then accept, and then turn on symmetry. Hey everybody, this is Steel Walking here, and you're listening to the Monster Cat Podcast. This next song is called Short Shorts. I wrote it, and it's written by me. Thanks. So we were talking about about this earlier, but when you do the when you do the the whole art test thing, some of the things that actually will let you um, sort of show your worth are simple, right? Things like doing little edits on like the integration of this horn into the head, where this feels okay on that side, but this side it kind of just feels crammed in. Finding a way to emulate the places where it's been done well on the model, the shoulder, I feel like. The following the contour of the shoulder feels better. So trying to pull that horn out of the back of the skull a little bit more rather than just perpendicular to it. Horns perpendicular to, to anything just look like costume to me. Like even if it's a slight turn back, if you look at antlers, the skull itself is forming into something, right? Like there's a, sh there's a direction to it. So finding a way to, to make those sort of choices better this right here where the, the horns are just sort of packed into that armor, finding a way to integrate that, those are good things that you can do. Where it's like small edits that aren't necessarily like, they're not changing the character, they're pushing it into something that makes a little more sense. I really do encourage you to have that that enable customize. Right now, I don't have Dynamesh on my UI, and I want it. Because <laughs> I'm just gonna go keep searching through the UI for it every time. So turn on my enable customize. We'll drag this in. Let's see, where can I cram it? Here, this guy can get out of here. So I do this all the time, I'll change change values um, that are on my UI. Let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little quick self-edit here. I'm never using that button. I do use transparency, but we can put that up here. And then we'll do this. I'll have to do a little, little editing here, but. So we got our resolution, we're gonna set it 64. Actually, 32. And I'm gonna turn on down the mesh. And then I'm gonna turn off enable customize. It's a little bit off screen right now. Store config. So now that will always be there with me. It will be my friend forever. Try to have four horns in four ears. Is that right? So I read that wrong when I first did it. Actually, these are ears. I know that for a fact. As an adult, that's that's information that I've retained. Fiber mesh? Nah. Nah. We're just doing a block in. I mean, we can always move into that sort of stuff later. But all I want to do is start representing all the forms 
that are on this character. I'm gonna start moving from the head down. And then what's gonna happen is, as I do this, with the block ins there, I'll start making choices about sizes and shapes again. Do some T pose meshing and push and pull. I like to leave anything that's technical, that's any like finicky at all, um, for much later. Oops. Dare I say it? I still love transpose when I'm working. You're tuned in to the Monster Cat Podcast. Oh, what's up, Hodor? Yeah, Hodor here actually works on the Guild Wars team. In fact, Hodor was in that uh, wall of, when I showed those art tests, he was in that wall of art tests when we first started the stream. Nah, nah, nah. No, Transpose is the, the little gizmo that isn't like the Max and Maya gizmo that they just re-added. Um, I was showing... I was showing this. The wall of, of art tests. Let's see, when do we hit Hodor? When do we hit Hodor? Nope. 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 Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. Are you not gonna be in here? Hodor. Oh my god. No, nah, definitely. We started from a. We started from a, one of these boys here. These little bad Larrys. Little Z. Little Z sphere action. <laughs> you never made it on. Oh my god. Yeah, money. That's what I've been doing. Is is just extracting parts. Now I'm not gonna like right now. Is not the time to worry too much about um, the specifics of what shapes I'm rendering right now. Just that it sort of represents an ear. And it's kind of in the right place. We'll get back to the proportion stuff in a little bit. Alright, let's do uh Let's do the sleeve. Well, no, we're not gonna do the sleeve yet. The sleeve actually Well, we could. What's up, Tech? So let's do... We'll do like, we'll do like the Curious. We'll start from that, and then we'll scribble on top of that. We'll dynamesh it, and sort of sketch out the shapes for the rest of the body. But we'll do the whole, um, we're gonna do the whole body as one piece. So I'll just get my, uh, get my lasso on.
I'll extract that. And I'm going to just smooth these a little bit. When I start with an extraction like this, I like to just go and just like soften through before I do anything squirrely with it. He's got a very nice, very nice tank top. TK, TKJ, uh, this was a two week test, I think. I want to say there's something in that, in that zone. Now this is not an active test, like, I don't use this anymore, that's that's why I actually felt okay about it. I, I waffled on what I was going to use for the art test portion of these streams um, quite a bit. Because I didn't want to use something that's currently being used. I didn't want to be too close to what any company would actively use. So I figured... What better way than to uh, right my wrongs? Hey, what's up, Isaiah? I'm redoing it, yeah. What's up, Brent? All right, so let's start scribbling in this uh, this armor, these armor pieces. Now we don't need to be too too specific about it. Got this sweet clay ball style dynamesh we got going here. And again, what I what I like to do when I do this stuff is to make sure that I give myself just enough. I even might poly paint a little um, at this stage to kind of give myself a clear idea of whether or not I've got shapes I can work with, and if I don't, I can go find ways to get them in there. So I like this Play-Doh stage quite a bit. This is actually one of my favorite stages. You can kind of solve a lot of problems when you're in this early, early stage. And remember, this is the kind of stuff, like, one thing that is important to remember is that, you know, it's weeks of work, it's not hours of work. You know, we're working through what we can right now. So proportionally, horns are too big, heads in the wrong position, all that stuff is important, but yeah, this is a long time ago. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll say eight, nine. So, what I'm gonna do is go from lasso to, uh, let's do freehand. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Rats. So, do you guys have any questions generally about what we talked about earlier? What to expect, what you should do, what you shouldn't do? I really think if you take anything away from the stream, like know that the most important thing to be tested on is your judgment. So when you have choices to make, really actually think about them. Don't just do a thing. You know, and it's like, hey, should I improvise or not? Really think about that choice. What does that mean? And if you decide to improvise, why? What are you doing when you improvise? Is it helping? Is it hurting? Don't do shit that makes me go, wait, what was he doing? What was she doing? What is this craziness? How long did it, did it take? Hmm, that's a good question. It took me a long time, um, not to be a character, it took, took me a long time to get a job, um, a full-time job. Now, I did a lot of contract work from home. At some point, that's how I was paying my bills when I was a young buck, but I learned this stuff when I, I taught myself when I was um, in my teens. I was like 12 or 13 when I started doing 3D. And so the, the time from when I thought I could do it to when I actually got a job was a long time. The time from when I started applying to when I got a job full time was a long time. So I think it's, there's a big difference between when you understand it and when you're ready. Dino holes. I don't tend to do what I just did. The way that I did that, I should have had back face mask on the first place, but I'm not worried about it. This is a throwaway mesh anyway, so all I need to do is make sure that my, the resulting model represents what I want it to. important thing is to know your audience Peter like figuring out what your audience is is really 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 important um and so we were talking about this earlier and if you missed it maybe I'm not gonna go in deep 
in deep about it again, but, um, you know, figuring out why you're being tested is really important. And in fact, it's kind of like, it's the same reason why I think a lot of models look bad is not knowing why you're making something. You don't know what the, like, what's this plate supposed to do? It's not even like telling yourself a deep story, but understanding what it's there for helps you make choices about how it would attach if you don't see that, right? Helps you make choices about, um, the slightly less noticeable features, the less rendered stuff, you know? Do I follow, do I follow this, like, you see these, like, these, like, threads that go around the outside of these plates? Should that be on every plate? Or should I kind of intersperse some flat edges you can see up here? What was the intent? So understand your audience, understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I think that's a huge, 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 huge bonus. When you get to that point where you understand why you're making the thing you're making, and understand why someone's asking you to do something, um, you're gonna do just so much a better job of achieving what they think is good. Uh, there's like a little bit of empathy, empathy involved. People don't tell you that, but really, it's not just about making a bomb ass piece of art. It's understanding how you fit in their team, how you'd fit into the environment that you could work in. Like if they have the best hard service model in the world, they don't give a shit about my hard service modeling. They want to know how I can upgrade them in another area, right? Showing what you're going to bring to the table um, on a team that doesn't necessarily think it needs something new. Maybe it just needs more. It's really, really important. Show your value. Show, show your, your, uh, your extra. So for me, one of the things that I did with this test to kind of give myself a little up when I did it was I skinned it and I kind of posed it a little bit. And Peter, you know enough, I mean, so I assume you know enough about, uh, about Guild Wars 2 in general, or just the art in general at that company. Understanding the company and where you're trying to, where you're trying to work is very important. And this is one where there's some really specific cultural things that they do where really you often don't get full character concepts. So how do you follow through with this? There are other places that it is not the case that you get to work through the concept idea, right? Like a lot of times it's like, oh no, you need to finish, you need to replicate, right? Know if you're supposed to be replicating. Know if you're supposed to be improvising. Are we playing jazz or are we playing classical music? You know what I'm saying? Do they need a problem solver or do they need someone to just build shit? Honestly, asking questions is a great way to find that stuff out too, you know? When you get to the point where you're like, hey, um, you want me to do an art test, a couple quick questions. What are you hiring this position for? Is it get it done? Like we gotta push a product out the door? Is it cleaning up other people's stuff? Is it uh, being a creative force on the team? Like just understanding the motivation uh, of the hiring manager. It's not hard for me to say, oh yeah, no, we really just want we want grunt. We want grunt work. Truthfully, that's what we need. Um, it's easy for me to say that, and there's no sweat. If they say they can't answer the question, that's fine. But I think in general, if you guys try and try and understand motivations in anything you're doing, that's that's where you start. You start winning. It really does just translate to a lot of different stuff, right? Like, what the concept artist was doing, what the modeler that did the first char was doing, what the original char concept was, you know, understanding what they were doing and why they were doing it. You have different conversations with the people around you about it then.
No, Red Hot. I I used to work at Arena Net. I worked uh I worked there for five years. For five years? Four and a half years? I worked there for all of Guild Wars 2. And then I went to Motiga for the last five. And now I'm just consulting. For the time being anyway. Consulting and streaming. TwitchTV.com slash so much monsters. Like you call me, hey pickup. <laughs> piano keys. Hey piano keys. Hey PK. Is there any benefit to making a portfolio of your own character designs, or is it just as good to find somebody else's sweet concepts and copy those? Uh, I feel like if you want to make your own characters, you have to more or less be competent character concept artist as much as a modeler. Um, all right, so legit, that's a great question, and I would say the answer is. What is your goal? Like, do you want to be a character artist? Because truthfully, one of them is going to be less strong than the other. I, you can be a boss. There are there are exceptions, but mostly, one's going to be better than the other, and it definitely shows better judgment if you show your best work only. Um, if you're just learning, I do not advise you to work on your own character concepts. And there's one really specific reason. It's that if you constantly are changing your self editing. You don't have anything to hold uh, hold up at the end and say like, did I do it? Did I make the thing that I was trying to make? Um, all you have is like this these pencil sketches throughout the whole thing where you've edited. And if you show me the concept and say like, here's what I was making, and then you show me the model and they don't look alike, then my feedback can only be on what I see, not on how you're executing. Um, I think totally cool to work on your own shit, but if you're really working on a portfolio for modeling, um, find someone who just is like freak mode doing concepts that just make you go, damn, I want to make that. And then you don't get the opportunity to say like, oh, I'm changing it. Cause it, it's not, that's not what's going to need to be done. Why did I leave arena net? Um, I, uh, I left arena net to go start, uh, work at a startup more complicated than that, but that's roughly speaking the reason. Really wanted to work on a, a tiny team before anything had been decided, so. And I got op an opportunity to like build a team and start a project from nothing. No answers. Like no real game even. I was just saying focus. Just keep your focus on whichever thing it is you really want to do. And you know, there are exceptions, right? Like we at Motiga, we had two modelers that were 50 50 between concept and, and, uh, and, and modeling. Uh, TKJ, if you want to show me stuff, do it when I'm on my stream. Um, unless I'm in that zone. So I'm trying to trying to work through some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Red Hots, what I'll end up doing is making these planes, figuring them out, deciding what I like and what I don't like. Um, and then once I've decided those things, I'll I'll do some hard service modeling. Yeah. easier to solve problems in this kind of mushy zone. What's up, Nick? What's going on, Nick?
All about solving problems. Actually, that's really what this job is, honestly. The problem is, make some shit. The solution is, who knows? <laughs> so figuring out as you go, you know, like the, the real, the real truth is character art is problem solving. And the reason I'm not extracting all these parts right now is that it's a little easier for me to push and pull when it's on one mesh, when I reproportion things, than if it were 15. And, it, and it's still easy if you post mesh it. It's just that some of the, the softness of things tends to flatten out the shapes and stuff like that. So for now, for now we're just gonna rough it. You know what I'm saying? Like right now I just realized those shapes are not right. Show a little more skin around here, char boy. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Piano, you see, you think you're trying to get good concept thing? Okay, that's fair. That is fair, Nick. He might need that. Yeah, getting burnt out is a thing, but you know what the thing is? Uh, you know, the best advice I can give you is like, the f the the joy of finishing shit is pretty big. I have to say, like, that's my number one favorite moment is getting a an asset and like looking at it the first time I render it down to the textures, putting it into a game engine of some sort, whether it's Marmoset or whatever, this real time rendering, and seeing that that sweet sculpt that I did turn into this like useful, usable thing. And then eventually ending up being this animated, like really cool character that, you know, everybody's put all this time into. It's a really, really, really satisfying feeling. So getting to the point where you finish it almost always means you gotta get excited about it. So whatever makes you excited is what you need to be doing. If you do shit that you feel like someone's telling you to do because they're telling you to do it, you'll never get it done. You'll never have fire behind it. And it's just not gonna be all that good of an asset. All that matters is that you want it, right? You gotta have that fire. You don't have that fire, you aren't gonna, you're not getting a job. Cause you, you won't actually spend time doing it. Why these go so far out, Joe? What is all this craziness? So far. So big. So big. My nephew. That's his favorite thing. <laughs> you just say so big and he starts doing this. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, so we're getting some more rough stuffs.
It's questionable, Nick. I'm sorry. It's the it's free music. I had to I had to find enough to fill my stream time. Right? And so Thanks for joining us on the Monster Cat podcast. The Monster, uh, Monster Cat podcast is what I was using. Cuz it's all rights or like free. Rights free? Yeah. That's a bad kitty. <laughs> That's a bad kitty. Yeah, dude, focus, 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 you need focus. What's up, Mr. Bowtie? This is Laszlo here, and you are listening to my track called Interstellar. Is it important to texture all your models for your portfolio? Not all of them, but definitely it's super, super, super lame to see great sculpts, like a bunch of great high polys, and no game rest stuff. It's like, well, you ha you got halfway there, congrats. I'm gonna go talk to the guy that can get all the way there. The, the game model stuff is not trivial. It's not... Like it's work, it's like serious work and it's actually really important for me as a hiring manager to say like, oh, you can do this whole job. Super important. Be right back. So we're making progress. This is still looking sludgy, but it looks so dope when you start breaking it apart. All right. Whoa, did someone say red wax? <laughs> Don't you ever put them all in red wax. Don't you do it. Not okay. This is a great example of like some like not so considered concept, right? There's a real leg that's actually coming forward. It's not going straight down. Uh, that has this loincloth across it. So we're gonna make it work. Bristol Bane, get out. <laughs>
So with the gauntlet, I'm gonna extract. Oh, we're gonna go back to our uh, lasso tool. Bunch of jokers in here. All right, with the arm. We're gonna look at this, like, does that look like it's wrapped, or that it's a... It looks like it's just like a whole wrap, huh? Let's do some science. Uh, Spruce, it really, it really depends on the, uh, on the, the model. And the like the the project you're on. What's the professional etiquette when displaying a model you did using someone else's concept art? Mention them. I mean, the truth is, at the end of the day, you know, like when I work on stuff, um, like it's more about like be the person you want or like do the thing you want other people to do, right? If someone use your concept to do something, you'd want to know, want people to know, like, hey, that's not their design; it's mine. So like when I work on games, um, I do my best to link to the artists that did the thing if I can. Um, or at least mention them. I mean, it's like when you're, when you're friends with someone, it, obviously it feels a little different than when you don't know them. But yeah, definitely mentioning that it's not your design is key. I'm honest though, I start from the I don't think you probably designed that. <laughs> like when I'm looking at models. Um, mostly because I generally wouldn't do my own design and model it. <laughs> Delete ZBrush. Oh my god. Fucking red wax getting so deep in there. Who knew? All right, so let's do a little bit of science on this hand, this this arm here. Let's do a. Uh, I like doing this with uh, with wraps. Got wraps, guys. You got wraps? You got wraps three stacks? I bet you got wraps. Three stacks probably got wraps. That's my guess. What do you guys think? think you think three stacks got wraps? Oops. All we'll do is...
God, I, I hate that. How it resets. Right. Oh! Groups. 256. Dynamesh. Okay. I will win, Gypsy. I will win. That yeah, was a slice curve brush, sorry. And now we just smooth across the top edges, plane it out a little bit. What's Tomming? Oh, Peeping Tom? Tampalock, I, I don't work for Pixelogic, for what it's worth. I'm just a dude. I'm just some guy that got their stream key. It's a secret. I'll sell it to you for $5. This is my basement. I like you like that you said Tomming. <laughs> What's up, Kingsley? You're, You're interesting, Harry. That's what I think. What do you do, Kings? How you doing? Are you a mesmer? Man, you know that's one class I never played. Never did it. I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. Been doing some consulting, which has kind of made... Made, uh... Prepping for the stream a little weird. Like, I'll just be not working tomorrow. I'll be doing some things. With this kind of stuff, it's important that it feels like there's an in and out. It's not just that you made them separate or whatever.
Also, um, right now there's no real form to the arm, so I'm gonna try and like do an overall set of moves that are just sort of about. In fact, I'm gonna step down a level or two. By a level or two, I mean all the way down. What I'll do is kind of like. Take this plane and then just kind of pop, 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 pop. Follow the contour of the arm a little bit more. It's not a series of tubes, is all I'm saying. Oh, polygroups are so easy, man. Let me show you. It's the easiest thing ever. I do like this gradient. I'm going to be really sad to lose that. So hold your butts. <laughs> so polygroups literally like the, the easiest way to use them. Easiest way anyway is just auto grouping. And it'll assign random groups to anything that's contiguous mesh. Um, if you don't want to do that and you want to just actually take a part of it, you can do uh, basically isolate the element that you want. So if I do masking, um, we'll say uh, we'll do um, actually we'll do visibility. We'll show part, right part. I can group these. Doesn't have to be contiguous mesh. And then really, it's just a matter of holding Control and Shift and and, uh, and clicking the element that you want. So if I click on Avert on this yellow or that green, it'll isolate that element. Control Shift dragging off the model, making the green box off the model will invert this, the uh, the visibility. So you can use any combination of hide the piece that you want, show the piece that you want. If you Control Alt Shift and click on one, it'll isolate that one element. Control shift clicking once you've hidden one thing. Oh, look at all these little fitzy rolls in here. Delicious. Oh man, look how delicious this looks. Let me hide these just so you can see. Oh boy, look at that gradient. Anyway, polygroups, it's like assigning uh, an ID that you can call back to. So if I was working on an arm, I could isolate just the the hand, make it a polygroup. It doesn't break the mesh though. It just says, hey, these are IDs for that element. And then you can use that to hide and show parts willy nilly to your heart's content. Before I do destructive stuff like that, I like to kind of like hide parts of it. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, cat did have good gradients, didn't it? I remember going from max bipeds to cat, and I was like, "What jerk decided these were the colors?" The old, the old. Uh, Old palette for bipeds. <laughs> ACDI. <laughs> it's tucked away down here. Sounds like you're a fan.
So when I do destructive stuff, I tend to duplicate the model. Um, Control Shift D is a shortcut for that. I do it all the time. So you'll see like I always have like extra little bits in here. But once I'm happy with what's there, I'll delete it and move on. Like here we've got an extra arm. So let's get that other, get our polygroup boy. Oh, I don't want to append it. Ooh, earns. I'm not, you know, I, I haven't really used the uh, lab bullions to super positive effect so far. I haven't really done a lot of sculpting since R8 came out. Um, I, I've definitely spent a few streams like just messing around, learning the tools, but my uh, my general workflow is a little. It's very broad. I use all the programs. So much programs.com. my new website I'm about to start so much programs.com <laughs> Hold on, not very well <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So I, I, uh, Hodor, one of the tricks for me, um, in the not having to go into an office every day has been, I made another user that I don't have like Steam and shit installed. I feel like that's one thing that I can say with students, especially, I, I fucking know that you're not working as much as, as, as you say you are. Cause like, if I can do a whole character bust in this, the, the, uh, the class and you had a week to just do one, you can get something done. If it looks like it's only the time that I gave you in the classroom to do it, I know you didn't do it. And oftentimes, when we would have the real talk hashtagged, uh, the truth is, you could tell that they were playing games. And like they, eventually they would be like, yeah, you know, it's hard to not play Call of Duty all the time. I totally agree. I, I totally agree. It is really easy to just play games and do anything else. Play with my cat. Hang out outside on the patio, drink a beers. Doing anything but that work that I have to do. But setting up myself with like a, you know, I'm going to get up in the morning and at, very, at the very least I'm going to open everything up. Being on a separate user with no games, no distractions, apart from like chat. Even that I probably could get rid of and probably be smart about it. But I think the real the real key was for me to separate business time from fun time. And computers are just not very good at doing that. They want you to do everything. They want you to multitask. Which really just means you're going to end up playing PUBG for six hours. Waking up to the sunlight behind you. Realizing why. <laughs> why did I do this to myself? 
somehow I gotta get stuff done. So the the answer is there's no real answer. It's just you gotta be you gotta be on it. You have to want it. It's really easy to be distracted. And I totally understand that, but there's no there's no trick. There's no like foolproof. You can't mess this up because you can mess it up. I mess it up all the time. And I think the truth is to be honest with yourself about it. And if you can be honest with yourself about it, I think that'll that'll uh, clear the way for you to make better choices. But if you're still in the stage of like, oh no, you know what? I can have, I, I got self control. I can do it. Um, if you're still in that stage, you know I'm a grown grown ass man who's been doing this for a long time, and I still don't really want to do it if I don't have like an environment around me that says it's it's work time. I know people that do freelance stuff exclusively. I know they have separate computers, one that's not connected to the internet to do work. That's like business time. And, and like many people that I know that do just freelance stuff will absolutely do that. We'll just be like, there is a place. It is this room. If I go in here, I don't mess around. Yeah, I don't know. Stream streaming is a little bit weird because it's kind of a combo, right? Like you have to be involved for it to be interesting. Um, and so I mean, I know that I'm about half as productive, roughly speaking. If I weren't if I weren't talking and interacting with people on my stream, the the focus mode I don't ever get to that point where I can really click out and like it, when I'm at work I'll put headphones on, put music on, and I'll just max out. I'll forget lunch. I'll just be sculpting forever. Um, and so I don't get that when I'm streaming. In fact, I've never had that feeling. It's just so you have to be so much more present. So it's definitely it's not for everybody. Streaming is not like a fail proof. Like, here's how to get more shit done. But I can see that for some people that will help. I definitely don't start from advising that. Like that's. Uh, Piano keys, Medicaid, dude. Honestly. I think, I don't know, he's not in here, but Nain, one of the dudes that hangs out in, in the uh, So Much Monsters stream, um, super fucking good. Like, really, really good. But found out at, I don't know, I think he's like 23 or 24 that he's got ADD. And so he started medicating. He's like, it's so different. <laughs> if you actually are... ADHD. It's such a different world. Okay, I'm getting in the weeds on these 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 wraps. I mean, let's get out of there. Let's get out of them weeds, boys and girls. What's up, Jake? Do I, I don't know. We haven't met, I assume. You said Johan told you about it. Why did Why did he tell me about tell you about it? Also, hi. How are you? Any friend of Joe is a friend of mine. You knew it was a char. I've been getting a lot of different results <laughs> in the uh, unofficial polling. Lizard seems to be the uh, leading, the leading prediction of what I'm making. important when you start out at this stage to not really worry about anything you're doing like the shapes that you have blow them out 
re-sculpt him at any moment. Like that skull, that was not, it's not the right size. And just pushing and pulling into the right position is going to totally murder what was there, so. That looks like a ding dong. I don't mean for it to look like a ding dong. Let's widen it so you guys don't freak out. Gonna grab the Twitch popo, stick them on me. For making wieners in chat. <laughs> a friend of mine got banned the other day for boobs, which is like the saddest thing. That's the day and age and we're in. Exactly. <laughs> Rip nipple band. Rest in peace, Leslie. Oh my god. Where, where, where do you live, Isle of Sky? That sounds like the worst place. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Someone just reported him. I don't think really people cared. I think that they have to care in the context of like we have terms of service, but I think that historically it turns out the more popular you get when it comes to streaming, the more likely people are going to uh, try and mess with you. I think that's actually what happened. I'm pretty sure it wasn't just Twitch Popo. <laughs> okay, we've gone too far. Holy shit. The chat just got, it's, everything's gone south. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we're wrapping up. I got only 20 minutes left. If you guys have any questions about doing our tests, about taking our tests, about making art tests if that's a thing that you do that you've never had to do before that's a world you gotta be in i don't know you guys have any insightful questions i've been talking all day i don't know Where did I get that mat? It's just a Zebro viewport shader, but I've got a, a brown on it. It's just this. I don't know, I always use different values. I shift it around as I go. 
It's one of the Zebro mat caps. I really love a lot of the stuff he did. They're really cool. Just like a lot of really good choices. Freddy Manifestation? No, we're good. We're good. I'm gonna try and crash through all these different elements. The legs are not the right place, and not the right place, and actually, shape-wise, they look fucking insane. So, let's... get there man I mean I still I don't feel like this is an expressive sculpt yet the thing is it really matters what matters is how you refine right it doesn't matter how fast you do it it matters how you, how you approach refining it and refining is like that's the art man the first the first hour or two where you're getting all the shapes in it's just like well this isn't gonna look right and right now I'm actually not super concerned I'm, I do a little bit little bit of proportion stuff right now but mostly right now I'm just repeating a process of trying to build up to the point where I can really see stuff I can see the choices I can make and I can I can see an exit right like I can see forward until I have all the parts I don't really see forward very far like basically I can see just in front of me that's it What's up, Franken? You know, we talked about it before, but I'll repeat some of it. Like the, the really important parts about doing an art test are understanding that you need to know who you're actually doing the test for. It's not just, it's not for Art Station, it's not for your portfolio, it's for answering questions for someone, right? And if it's a cattle call where it's just everybody ever gets to do it, um, know that you have to stand out. Know that you need to find a way for people to look at all the tests that, that come in for that and say, damn, all right, look at that guy. Look at that girl. They're doing something special. What should you look for when you reach the end of our tests? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Sounds like a Michael Bay wet dream. What? What are What the hell? I think it's actually more like 16 now. 16 or 17. So absurd. That's so weird. Life is weird. You don't know you're old until you're old, and then you don't really know you're old. You just kind of feel like, wait, what happened? What happened? Where do we go? How did we get here?
What kind of presentation? Um, let's see. Well, I can show you what I I've done for my my art tests. Um, if that's useful. I mean, so this one I can show you right now since I had that up. Hmm. With an art test, generally speaking, they're gonna ask for everything. So you want everything, you wanna show them everything. You should start with that. That's easy mode, start there. Um, so I'm trying to find uh... Here, this is the test that I did for ArenaNet. Here's how I presented it. It was just one shot posed. If you can pose something, even if they didn't ask you to, you got the inside track. It's like a, it's like a little peek in the box. Like, oh, I got some more things to show. I got some more things for you. That's the inside track. Do it. Um, this is old though. I would not present it like this. But this is like, you know, I gave them all the textures. Let them see that. I also gave them a picture of the high poly. Now, th again, this is some old shit. Um, I'll show you the most recent art test that I've done. Um, most recent would be Um, let me see. So much Uh, the most recent one I did was for Epic. That's older, still, still over a year old. Um, so these, this was the presentation I did for for that. Um, and this one they told me to make the head, a game res model, and then the body, uh, just a high poly, or upper body, just a high poly, so like the hard surface and stuff. Um. For a still older test. I lost the page again. Where'd it go? For that the Halo Halo dude. This was the presentation I did for that. Similar, you know. They asked for pick one part and make a game res model. So there's some shots of that rendered nicely and then uh, a low poly animation block in. And so this is just you can see there's like a slight wireframe on it. Um Yeah. But show them, show them the goods, show them like the important parts. Uh, and make sure that you, uh, make sure if they ask for, oh, ZBrush just crashed. Nice. Ripperino. That never happens, obviously. <laughs> I didn't save one time, so here's hoping our quick save did the gerb. <laughs> it's one of those days, you guys. It turns out streaming plus talking plus arting means, I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Is it you? Oh, what's up, Red Wax? How are you? Get out of here.
Why do I have that pop-up from ZBrush on? Rip. I don't know, Frank. Maybe because I like ZBrush. ZBrush Live. Actually, I, I did turn it off. Uh, and I had to reinstall because I, I messed up the, uh, the user rights for my uh, contract. I said it was you can only be using used on one user. Turned out that was not true. Coming up next is part one of my upcoming EP with Seven Minutes Dead, Midai Sakai. The track is called Neo Soul. Enjoy. <laughs> Looks like a beaver. Um. Yeah. Any other questions? We only got. Five more minutes. Just want to make sure that you know if you guys had questions, I'm covering it. So I'm just kind of just doing a pass on, uh, just general. Let's hide these hands. Yeah, this is all of this was done in ZBrush, Anthony. Can I get the same work done on Blender? Oh boy. Uh, I. No, not the stuff that I'm doing. The truth is, like, Blender is a cool software and everything, but it just isn't. It's, it's not a comparable thing to what I'm doing. ZBrushing, like, sculpting in general, um, it just isn't comparable. And I'm sure someone in here is going to tell you that you can, and I'm going to just tell you you can't do any of the stuff that I've done today, sculpt-wise, in Blender. You can do stuff there, though. You can do some cool stuff. No questions. I'm not disparaging it, I'm just saying. Real talking. Up and down the block. So I'm gonna actually keep streaming on my own channel. I'm gonna keep working on this today for a little while, maybe an hour or two more, and turn off this god awful playlist. Oh my god. I think you should get some Popeyes, TJ, as your uh, as your uh, attorney, your attorney and oil man. I do advise you to get some Popeyes. You can get red wax in Blender. You couldn't do it. Oh my god. Um. Could you describe the approach you use to create the character? Like high poly, low poly, topology, UV map, big. Um, literally, that's it. I do the high poly first, and I'll make the low poly. Well, low poly topology is the same thing. Um, and then I'll unwrap it and render. I have been rendering in Substance Painter lately. I've been using that pretty heavily. Um, been, been using that pretty heavily in uh, my workflow now. I love it. It like makes it makes doing like uh, doing materials a treat. It's like Photoshop for material work. It's so dope. Um, so Substance Painter has been really, 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 really important to me. And then once I do that, I bring it into the engine, do all the final stuff that I need to do to make it work. Whatever engine I need, you know, depending on what what stuff we're working towards. You just click my name. How do you model? Um, there's no GoZ. Um, I do all my model, my low poly, and max. Specky Nation is just so much monsters. That's me. If you click me, that's me. 
Do I need to make the overlay kind of... Oh, it's right there. It's literally on the bottom of the screen. Twitch.tv slash so much monsters. <laughs> I'm not... I don't acknowledge this 3D code as a program. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Frank. Oh my god. Okay, so real quick, recap. Recap of today, let's talk about it. So first of all, this guy looks insane. His proportions are so weird. I'll work on him. We're gonna do that in a little bit. Um, number one most important thing, when you get to the point where you've got a portfolio that's dope, and you're ready to get a dope job with some dope people making dope stuff, know your audience when you get that art test. And you will get art tests. It's just a fact, you're gonna get them. Um, know your audience. Know what they want to know from doing that test. Don't just make shit. Don't just make a model. Understand them. Start there. Figure them out first. Before you make any model at all, figure out why you're doing it. Do they not think you're a good high poly modeler? Do they think your materials are shit? What is it that they think that you need to be tested for? And if it's all of the above, then good luck. Godspeed. Um, but start there, figure it out. Um, then also do research. Research the company, research the the style, research if there's, like Char exists in, in Guild Wars 2, right? Char existed in Guild Wars 1. There's plenty of information on what I should and shouldn't do about with this character. Um, so figure that out, start there. Before you model anything, Figure out who your audience is and what you're making and why you're making it. Um, let's look at my notes real quick. It's really important to understand uh, the type of company you're work like you're doing a test for. If it's like a place like like ArenaNet, they're gonna see tons of tests because it's cattle call, right? Like it's open calling for tests. You want to do it, you make it you can surprise them. If it's one that they've asked you specifically for, and then they're only gonna have five people do it, then you really gotta be on your game. If it's in a sea of, of tests, think about ways to differentiate yourself. Whether it's you're just better at materials than other people, or you your high polys are gonna look so dope, your renders are gonna be great, your game model is gonna be amazing, whatever those things are, figure out what makes you unique. And then also figure out what's gonna be the biggest challenge for you. And when you figure those things out, the whole test kind of, it kind of maps itself out for you. You take the big challenges first. I don't really feel like any of the parts of this model are particular challenges for me, but if they were, that's how I would start it. So in general, just kind of work through what the problems are and map out the big stuff first and start on those. Well, Resoners, if, if it's like arena net or um, I don't know splash damage has an open art test. There's a bunch of companies that have put up an art test just because like if you want to do it, go ahead. Um, before you even talk to anyone, you talk to a recruiter. Like the weird thing about doing that shit is like when it's an open call like that, every job has a like a maximum amount of money you can spend on the hire, whether it's three hundred thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars. There's a huge range, right? And so if someone who gets paid $300,000, which doesn't happen in art, in games, just hear me out. Someone who gets paid $300,000 and expects that, does the art test and it like they murder it, they're never gonna get paid $300,000 if the budget for that headcount was 60. So it's weird to have that kind of shit where it's like, do this before you know, but it does mean that there are plenty of times where if you know who the audience is and how to get their attention, um, you can do a pretty good job with it. 
And it's really easy when you see those kind of things to Google what other people have done. And you can figure out, did they get a job there or not? You know, research is key when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, ACDI, um, or is AC Digital DigiArt? Yeah, you definitely have to do the, the materials. That's actually super, the, probably the most important part, and I think a lot of people sleep on that. Materials, textures and materials are actually the final stage where you get to really decide whether or not you screwed yourself or not. So, um, if you do a good job on the materials, you can save a mediocre sculpt. If you do a terrible job on the materials, you can really mess up an amazing sculpt. So, materials, I would argue, is the most important thing to do well. And I think there's like, there's sliders for all the other parts of it. Your deformation might be a little bit questionable. I can train you on that if it's not too bad. But yeah, materials, materials are the thing that will screw you completely. Yeah, Resonators, it's just a matter of whether or not it's a website or not, like whether it's a website or a, um, if it's just on a website or like a, like ArenaNet does an open enrollment for internships, like you get a year of getting paid, but everybody does an art, art test. Well, Tanuki, you want to get all this stuff, I, do it in sequence, like feel comfortable with the sculpt, feel comfortable with the, the high poly, get comfortable with the, the, the technical parts of it. Material stuff you can do pretty, you can learn pretty, you can bone up on it pretty easy. They can, you ask if, if you do pass an art test and have weaknesses, do they help you improve on? Um, well, if you pass the art test and they don't think your weaknesses are all that bad, that means that you're getting a job. Well, you're, you're getting an interview anyway. Um, I think that's, that's for you to, to deal with, right? Like as a, as a person looking for advancement, trying to get better at stuff, that's you. You figure that part out. How and where do you suggest learning ZBrush? Well, right here on this channel is a pretty damn good place. There are a lot of really rad artists, dude. Just come by whenever there's streams. Like, there's so many really great people. Ask them questions. Um, but most importantly, play with it. You need to, like, mess around and kind of get excited about making stuff. I think that's probably uh, one of the most overlooked skills is being curious. Being a curious person means that you're going to learn so much because you're just going to ask questions, you're going to tinker. So. Alright, so I am I'm over time right now. Um, I'm going to go stream on my own my channel, twitch.tv slash so much monsters. I'll be on there in a minute. But, um, so, now I realize I didn't get through an art test because it turns out this is two weeks of work. So I'm going to work on this. I'll probably get through some sculpting parts of it. Um, the next, next stream we're going to, we're going to be a junior artist. We're going to figure out what that job looks like. Um, we're going to try out, we're going to try out some different, different possible things you might end up doing as a junior artist or intern, whatever. Um. Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll see you guys I'll see you guys next week same time. Um, we'll be doing the next job. Until next time. S the secret I just want to tell you guys I got hired. Kitty. I got hired with this test that I'm doing right now. It's like I can predict the future. <laughs> All right, you guys. I will see you later. Thank you so much for hanging out. Yeah, I'll pop on my stream on my stream in a few minutes. Got to switch everything over now. So, bye.